so bismillahir rahmanir rahim so we are starting your second lecture that is about the functional and structural organization of the body at the end of this lecture you will be able to know different levels of organization of the body you will be able to explain the basic cell types and their brief role you will also be able to explain different type of tissues in the body and their importance in the body different organs and their examples different body systems and you will be able to explain at the end what is the organism level how organism functions in the previous lecture i introduced you to different levels of organization of body in which we briefly mentioned about the chemical level cellular level tissue level organ level body system level and then organism level today we will go into brief detail of each level molecules atoms they make up molecules we studied basic type of atoms in the previous lecture that include oxygen carbon dioxide hydrogen nitrogen and these basic atoms there are so many atoms but these are the basic atoms these four basic atoms they basically make different molecules these make up different molecules and these molecules include carbs proteins fats <coughs> nucleic acid that includes dna and dna basically contains the genetic material it contains the and what is the use of carbohydrates proteins and fats briefly <laughs> their breakdown yields energy their breakdown yields energy that is used for the synthesis of proteins and used by the body for different metabolic processes for growth of the body then is the cellular level there are about more than 100 trillion cells in the body and among them certain features they are common to each cell while the certain features they are not common to other cells so the cells they widely differ in function cells widely differ in function but the common features to each cell includes number 1 each cell is limited by a membrane, membrane. that is called cell membrane or plasma membrane and inside the 
plasma membrane there are cell organelles and there is one exception where cell organelles are not present and that ex exception is red blood cells that exception is second <clears throat> living cells continuously transform materials continuously transform materials and this property of cells is called metabolism are their metabolic role so metabolism includes both things catabolism and anabolism catabolism means breakdown of large molecules to smaller molecules and anabolism means formation of large molecules from small molecules and collectively we use the term metabolism for this the third property of cells is that all cells at some point in their life history possesses a nucleus and nucleus is for it contains genetic material at some point means we are talking about the red blood cells initially when they are formed there is a nucleus that is gradually it is eliminated it is washed from the red blood cells during their different developmental stages so basic types of cells there are four basic types of cells in the body there are many types of cells in the body but there are four basic types four basic types many but four basic types we usually discuss and the first of them is epithelial and the second one is connective tissue and the third one are the muscle cells and the fourth one are the nerve cells and nerve cells they are called neurons now what are epithelial cells what is the brief role of epithelial cell epithelial cells they are located at the surface so epithelial cells they are located at surface and they provide protection provide protection they provide surface for absorption and secretion they provide surface for absorption and secretion for example 
in the gastrointestinal system the gastrointestinal system is basically a hollow tube the its inside is lined by the epithelial cell so any content that is useful that is useful for the body and it is being used by the body cells it first absorbs through the epithelial surface that faces the lumen then it passes through the epithelial cell in through different transport processes and then moves into the space between the cells that is called interstitial space and then from interstitial space into the blood stream and through blood stream it is basically carried to all the body cells it is carried to all the body cells so now this process of secretion and absorption this process is selective this process of secretion and absorption is selective it is not the property of all the epithelial cells it is not the property of all the epithelial cells it is not necessary that all the transport processes they occur at the surface of epithelial cells so those transport processes are basically important for the absorption and secretion absorption from lumen of gid tube through epithelial cells into the blood stream and secretion is either from the epithelial cell or from the interstitium into epithelial cells and from epithelial cells into the lumen and many things they are synthesized by the epithelial cells that they secrete that they secrete the second cells they are connective tissue cells as the name indicate connective means they are present in between other cells they are present in between other cells when they are present in between other cells that directly means that they are supporting other cells so they are present in the form of supporting network between the cells in the form of supporting network between the cells and they perform many functions that we discuss in the uh, coming slide that is on connective tissue so their basic function is support they anchor cells together and they give strength they give strength then are the muscle cells muscle cells they generate basically mechanical force what they generate generate mechanical force and that force is utilized for the movement of fluid or contents i am using both things for the movement of fluid fluid can be blood fluid can be simple water and contents means like the movement of food in the gastrointestinal tract that helps in the force and movement and then the fourth type are the nerve cells that are called neurons now these are the neurons uh, are the nerve cells that play regulatory role that play regulatory role how by receiving information by passing that information in the form of signals that are called nerve signals or action potentials to the brain and from the brain the nerve signals they reaches the muscles they reaches the glands they reaches to other neurons in the series to produce effects to produce effects so simply they play a regulatory role 
as they generate nerve signals. They generate nerve signals. Then the tissue level. We defined in the previous lecture that two or more basic type of cells, they form a tissue. And their property is that the collection of cells that are similar, that are similar and carry out related functions and we label them as tissues. Each tissue consists of a cells of a large or small specialized type. Each tissue is composed of cells of a single specialized type. So basic type of tissues therefore on the basis of four basic types of cells and they are muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, and nervous tissue. Now, first are the muscle tissues. The muscle tissue is composed of three basic types. One, two, and three. So, the first type is skeletal muscles. And skeletal muscles, they help in movement. They help in movement. Conchi movement, voluntary and involuntary both. Like we discussed the mechanism of shivering. In shivering, there are involuntary contractions of muscles. They are involuntary contractions of muscles. But usually, when we are talking about the role of skeletal muscles, we are talking about the voluntary contractions. We are talking about the voluntary contractions. Then are the smooth muscles. Smooth muscles, these are present in hollow tubes. And these controls movement of contents. Hollow tubes. Like... GIT, nephron, blood vessels, respiratory tract, excellent, bilkul theek. So their role is that they move contents, their contraction it leads to the movement of contents. Then the third type of muscle tissue are the cardiac muscles. And cardiac muscles, they are present in the heart chamber, left and right atrium, uh, sorry, left and right ventricle, left and right, uh, right atrium. And the role of cardiac muscle is to pump blood. Role is to pump blood. When we say that the heart pumps blood, that means it, we are talking about ventricles. We are talking about ventricles. Then the next are the nervous tissue. You can see from this diagram, the structure of a neuron or a nerve cell. The nerve cell usually a standard neuron or a nerve cell is composed of a cell body and then 
two processes and these processes processes are called dendrites and dendrites they receive they receive information and information received by the dendrites it passes to cell body then from cell body at this dilated portion that is the initial portion of the exon that is a second process attached to the cell body at this dilated portion then the ion channels they open and action potential or a nerve signal is generated so it is the site where basically the nerve signal is generated and that nerve signal it travels along the exon to reach its terminals and those terminals they may give message to a muscle they give message to a gland, gland to cause secretion to muscles to cause contraction and to the next neuron to convey message to the final destination so the basic function of the nervous tissue is regulation and control regulation and control in the nervous tissue in addition to neurons other supporting cells are present other supporting cells are present do you know about the supporting cells that are present in between the neurons yes please tell um, please give him mic G. These are sporting cells are these are glial cells. These are glial cells. Do you know uh, about different types of glial cells? G. These are Ependymal cells, micro microglia. These are micro. Then oligodendrocytes. And then astrocytes. We divide uh, basically uh, the nervous tissue. They make up nervous system. They make up. They are the building blocks of the nervous system. Now these Schwann cells. We divide the nervous system into peripheral and central nervous system. Oligodendrocytes. They are present in the central nervous system. While these Schwann cells. These are present in the peripheral nervous system. Then are the epithelial tissue. The epithelial tissue, as we mentioned, they are present at the free surface. They are present at the free surface. And their role may be to provide protection. Their role is to provide selective secretion and absorption. And I am using one more term. Their role is also to reabsorb absorption occurs in the gastrointestinal system and reabsorption of usual materials it occurs along the length of the tubule of the nephron where epithelial cells these are present now <clears throat> there are three surfaces of epithelial cells as you can see from this diagram, there is one apical surface. There is one apical surface. And this apical surface, it always faces free side. Then is the lateral surface. And this lateral surface, it is present 
towards the adjacent cells it is present towards the adjacent cells and then is the basal surface this is basal surface and this basal surface it uh, like apical surface if it is the superficial then basal surface it is the deepest and it rests on a structure that is called basement membrane and basement membrane it includes two things number one basal lamina and then is reticular lamina and below this basement membrane is basically layer of connective tissues that we will discuss later now the purpose of this apical surface lateral surface and basal surface this is interesting i am making diagram of epithelial cells that are present along the tubule of the nephron this is the lumen and this is one epithelial cell a and this is second that is b now this is the lateral surface this is apical and this is basal this is basal surface and basal surface it always rests on the on the basement membrane and below the basement membrane there is connective tissue and connective tissue they are present in between the cells and connective tissues they include all other things means they include cells the connective tissues they include fibers the connective tissue they include combination of proteins and carbohydrates that are called glycose amino glycans glycose amino glycans that maybe you have studied in the fsc gags you will uh, study them in detail in the biochemistry now at the apical surface the things they move through epithelial cells into uh, through the epi epical surface of epithelial cells inside the epithelial cell then in the epithelial cell they also produce what do they produce carbon dioxide water is produced the enzymes are present along the apical surface the apical surface uh, cells uh, uh sorry the epithelial cells they synthesize many things they utilize the things that moves from apical surface to inside the epithelial cells then from the epithelial cells things they move either through the basal surface or through the lateral surface collectively the lateral and the basal, basal surface they are called basolateral surface they are called basolateral surface basically the basolateral surface is free surface in which the fluid is floating in which the fluid is floating <coughs> so what is the function of apical surface they provide protection selective from now onward you will use the word selective absorption and secretion and what is the purpose of lateral surface it provides surface for the transport of material that moves inside the epithelial cell to the interstitium then is the basal surface what is the role of this basal surface ji 
it anchors it adheres it adheres किसको एडहियर करती है डिफरेंट सेल्स एंड इट एडहियर्स एपिथीलियल सेल्स टू द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू सेल्स एज इट रेस्ट ऑन द बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन एंड बिलो द बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन देयर इज कनेक्टिव टिश्यू कनेक्टिव टिश्यू वाज कंपोज्ड ऑफ एक्सा सेलर मैट्रिक्स एंड एंड the cells in the connective tissue they include ground substance uh, the extracellular matrix is composed of ground substance and fibers and the fibers in the extracellular matrix they include collagen fibers elastic fibers and reticular fibers the collagen fibers they are present in the bone cartilage tendons what are tendons they attach muscles to bones and then they are part of the ligaments and ligaments they attaches bone to bone then are the elastic fibers and the elastic fibers they form a fibrous network within a connective tissue and provide elasticity and provide elasticity then are the reticular fibers they form branching network that provides supports in the wall of blood vessels and these fibers they are also part of the soft tissue organs like spleen like spleen like lymph nodes then are the connective tissue cells these are the basic types of connective tissue cells the first are the fibroblast these are flat cells and these are present in all connective tissue they are present in all connective tissue and these fibroblasts they help in the migration of connective tissue they help in the migration of connective tissue number 1 number 2 they secrete fibers they secrete other fibers and water then are the macrophages macrophages they are derived from the monocytes and their basic role is that they en engulf foreign organisms that are harmful for the body and their other function is that they digest cellular debris the cell is continuously transforming throughout life the new materials are formed and old materials they are taken up by the macrophages then are the plasma cells plasma cells they are derived from another type of white blood cells that are called lymphocytes and these plasma cells they are formed by the b lymphocytes they are derived from b lymphocytes and these plasma cells their role is to secrete antibodies 
And what is the role of antibodies? They attack invading organism. Then are the adipocytes. These are also called fat cells. And these act as stores of triglycerides. These act as stores of triglycerides. And the role of uh, these adipose tissue is that they insulate the cells and also they are storehouse of energy. They are storehouse of energy. Then are the white blood cells. These include neutrophils, monocytes, lymphocytes, then basophils, then eosinophils. And all these cells, they play a role in providing defense against the invading organism. And the last one are the mast cells. They secrete histamine. And histamine, it dilates blood vessels. And they play a role in allergic reactions. When allergy occurs in the body, that means the mast cells, they became activated. And we use antihistamines like all of you are well familiar with Rejix, Zyrtec, Aval, Telfast. The drugs that you use in flu, in case of allergy, in case of itching, these are commonly used drugs. And all these drugs, they are antihistamine drugs. Stomach. It is composed of, you can see it is composed of epithelial and connective tissue. The role of epithelial cell is that it provides protection. It provides protection from the harmful or the acidic things that we take in food. That we take in food so that they cannot enter into the wall. Then are the connective tissue. Then are the smooth muscles that are present in the wall of the stomach. And they help in the churning you can say it provides that is called mixing and propulsion of food contents. that are called that is called kind <clears throat> then in the epithelium if it is providing support it is providing barrier that prevent the lumen of the stomach from damage at the same time the epithelial cells, they are of two types. Number one, they are the epithelial cells proper that help in the sport, that helps in the protection, that helps in the secretion. The glands, they are also epithelial cells and they secrete different hormones. Now the epithelial glands, the epithelial glands that are present in the wall of the stomach. It secretes gastric juice and that gastric juice basically converts food contents into a milky fluid that is called 
हाँ एंड देन द कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ऑफ द स्मूथ मसल इट मूव दैट काइम फ्रॉम द स्टॉमिक इन टू द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन इन टू द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन नाउ डिफरेंट ऑर्गन्स डिफरेंट ऑर्गन्स दैट परफॉर्म रिलेटेड फंक्शन दैट परफॉर्म रिलेटेड फंक्शन रिलेटेड फंक्शन मीन्स लाइक इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ डाइजेशन एंड एब्जॉर्बन डिफरेंट ऑर्गन्स लाइक पेंक्रियाज लाइक लीवर लाइक गोल ब्लैडर दे आर प्लेइंग रोल सो दे आर डिफरेंट ऑर्गन्स लाइक स्टॉमिक इज डिफरेंट ऑर्गन इंटेस्टाइन्स दे आर डिफरेंट ऑर्गन्स सो दे आर ऑल डिजाइंड इन सच ए मैनर टू प्रोवाइड डाइजेशन एब्जॉर्बन एंड एक्सक्रीशन ऑफ वेस्ट प्रोडक्ट्स फ्रॉम द बॉडी सो दे ऑल summed up to form a one system that is called gastrointestinal system that is called gastrointestinal system so in this way at the system level there are 11 basic systems there are 11 basic systems starting from brain to the reproductive system there are 11 basic systems and those basic uh, those 11 systems again the thing is that designing one organ is designed by the tissues that perform relative function so different systems they are made up of uh, by the allah to perform one function so that the organism can survive like the nervous system and endocrine system they provide regulation heart pumps blood that contains oxygen and nutrients the respiratory system it takes up oxygen and provides through blood to the heart so that it can be distributed so the git system it provides energy the reproductive system it helps in the reproduction of new ones the renal system is designed such that the regulation of blood that is flowing that is pumped by the heart and it is flowing through the circulatory system it can be preserved it can be maintained at a certain level otherwise the loss of blood from the body will lead to less availability of blood to the heart and less pumping and decrease in blood pressure increased fluid extracellular fluid means increase in blood volume and increase in blood pressure so all the systems they basically are performing functions for the survival of the organism so these were the last words about today in the next lecture we will discuss the cells interior and exterior total body weight and the concept of internal environment thank you very much